Hi, this is your boy Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South, Alabama. Alabama is where I lay my head. That is where the home is the home of Premier Leather Crafters right here. And you're right here in the Premier Leather Crafters Workshop, aka my garage, which has been converted, but you guys already knew that. And from previous videos, you already knew, save your money. You don't have to get any building outside of your home that's uh, is getting so far away from traditional business nowadays that you don't have to go out there and get a traditional building in order to say you have a business. UPS, FedEx, and the post office ships all over the world. So you guys can make your products right in your home where it's somewhere that you're already paying bills at. Minimize your spending to maximize your profits. This is what Premier Leather Crafters and the STM program, Strategic Target Marketing, is all about doing business in a different way in 2019. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about the completion of the valet tray. Now, I had started doing another video earlier, and then the video feed was interrupted by a phone call, so I had to start all over again. But in that initial video, I was pointing out uh, when you guys get your trays done, you see it might be a little off a little bit. That's no problem. Nothing that water can't fix. Uh, and that's simply by just moistening the leather a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, we already know that this is an eight by eight tray. So I'm gonna come back and measure the insides of this valet tray from side to side again, since we put the corners on. Doing the uh, just take some more measurements, and you guys can go to your local Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever um, place in your area that sells wood, and you can buy that piece of, of just a regular block of wood. So, if you're going to be doing the eight by eight valet trays, now you can get planks, board planks, uh, from as short as a two by four, uh, of two by six, a one by six, a one by eight, one by 10, one by 12. You can, whatever size ballet tray that you're gonna be making. And what I'm telling you is, is to cut that out the exact same size of this, your finished product, once you know what ballet trays you're gonna be making, then you're gonna just come back with your spray bottle, moisten both the outside real heavy with water, and then you're gonna put that block inside of here to make it form that perfect square just to give it that great professional look and then now i have a vacuum seal um what i use uh in, in my wet molding projects and you guys can go to your local walmart and buy that uh, i think i spent 14.99 on that vacuum seal and you can get the bags the uh, additional bags all the way up to a one gallon size bag uh, for another $3.99 or $3.97, whatever Walmart charges, and depending on the size project. But you can get them all the way from a four by six up to a one gallon bag. And then you put that block of wood inside of here, and then you put both of them inside of that vacuum seal bag, and then you just suck the air out until it starts making the bag fit tight around your project and that block of wood. Now, the great part about wet molding, if you're doing it the way that I do it, you can actually leave that piece outside and let the sun once you pull the put all of the air out of it and you got it nice and tight then you can just leave it out during the day uh depending on what area you live um and now if you're out west somewhere where it's not so humid it's just that dry weather two three four hours max four hours max you can leave it out there and then you know that it is thoroughly dried it has pulled all of that moisture out of there and then when by the time you pull it out of that vacuum bag it will be a perfect square now you have to also level up all of the warpness in this so you don't have to actually deal with uh the tray sitting flat i guess i want wish you guys can get this down i'm gonna try to move this camera down so you can see where it won't have any rocking like this. You want this thing to sit flat on a client or a customer's uh, coffee table, banister, bar counter, wherever they have, you want it to sit flat without any rocking. Now, I don't think that'll deter from the actual work because you're actually focusing on the detailing of the work inside of the tray, but 
just for me to have that professional look. I want this to sit flat. Now, earlier in the earlier videos, I was pointing out the fact that the corners, once I sewed these up, the same thing that I told you guys about running that stitch along the outside just to make it look even more professional and more clean. Uh, the problem that I ran into was the corners was not even, they weren't flush. Now, I don't know if that was because of the stitching process, running that, that saddle stitch and pulling the thread tight, but it caused the corners to kind of tilt a little bit and one side was higher than the other. Now, luckily for me, in my shop, I have a belt sander and that I went back and trued these corners all down and made those all nice and even and flush and did that all the way around the entire project. Then I came back and took my edge rounder and rounded off those corners, put a little bit more gum trag on there and just went back and slicked everything down again. And now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put some more edge coat. I already have my edge coat ready and I'm just gonna re-edge coat these again and then come back with some more gum track on top of the edge coat. Now, there was a question in uh, one of the, another video that um, somebody, one of the subscribers had asked and they said, well, I was told to put gum track on last because gum track doesn't receive, uh, it doesn't accept the dye or the edge coat real well. Now, in my experience, um, I even recently, just just this previous week, uh, I didn't have any problems with the um, the dye or the edge coat mixing and merging well, marrying well with the gum track. So now maybe that's something I don't have a definitive answer for that. I've even called Tandy and asked questions about which one goes first the gum track or the dye, which one came first, the chicken or the egg. Basically, that's the problem that, or, or the situation that you're getting into. Now, most crafters that I know, they would do all of their edge burnishing and slicking first, and then they would dye it. Now, the one thing I do know about Phoebe's dye, you don't necessarily have, because Phoebe's dye is made so well, in my earlier years, before I even used gum track or any type of edge coat, I would just burnish and slick with water and the dye itself. But then as I started developing more into my craft, then I just, uh, the edge coat, the gum track, and all of that stuff just won me over because I love the way of that mirror finish. That's just something that I love. Now, I probably probably could have gotten that same result in the older, in the, uh, the earlier years, if just a little bit more elbow grease and time. But now my time is limited. I don't have as much time as I did back then because I'm, uh, I have a lot of work to do. So edge coating and gum track just sped that process up. But to get back to the question was, which one goes first, the gum track or the dye? I haven't found any um, evidence that says that gum track doesn't accept dye or an edge coat after you've already put the gum track on. So now what I'm going to do, boys and girls, and I really what I want you guys to do is I'm not going to do another video with the finished product because I'm working on another project that I want to do a video on that. So, but... Um, if you guys can shoot over to my social media pages where you will see final pics, final pictures of this, because I like this tray. I was going to keep it for myself, but being that I only do one offs, if a customer or a client decides that they want this, uh, valet tray, then it is going on the selling block. It will be up for sale. So, and, and that's uh, not something else that I learned don't make anything for yourself or don't make anything and then you talk yourself into saying I want to keep it because and this is just the cowboy now when you keep your own product you don't make any money off of it I mean and you have a lot of customers and people saying man that looks good let me get one but the way I built my company my business is I only do one-offs so if a customer calls in and says that they want this piece, then most definitely I'm going to let it go. 
But this, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, everything is finished except going and back, going back and putting that final edge coat. Uh, I've already did some more gum track and burnished it again after I evened up the corners. But this is the finished product. It is done. It's, it's going to get as much as it's going to do, and it has been coated already with two coats of tan coat just to protect that and one thing that i learned from don gonzalez about tan coat and you guys need to get this tan coat the one thing i learned about tan coat is even after you've applied your tan coat unlike other finishes tan coat accepts oil it does accept the uh neat's foot oil so even if a customer has this product for a while uh, on any of your leather products that oil will penetrate the tan coat so the leather will get the oil that it needs so to me with tan coat I'm just not going to start just tan coating the top part that's visible for customers to see I'm also going to start tan coating the opposite side now don't worry about these I have some uh, deglazer I know you guys are seeing these little spots and I need to get another cutting board because my cutting board uh, it has been dyed on before so but to remove these spots and this is some good food for you guys to understand or some good food for you to take and digest you can use deglazer to remove spots in leather especially uh, pencil pen ink dye you can use deglazer and it will pull that up out of there so don't be dismayed or trash a project just right off because it has a little spot on there so that's maybe in another video I'll go into the, the benefits and the details about deglazing, but uh, every the, all of this project is going to get another good coating of tan coat and then it's ready to ship. So if you guys want to see the fin final picks with the, the edges fully burnished, and I think you can see where I had edge coated at one time, and then after I trued up the corners, uh, it kind of peeled that or it sanded off the former edge coat. But um, uh, if you guys want to see the final picks, just hit me up on uh, Cowboy PLC on Instagram, or you can hit me up on Facebook under Robert Muhammad, or you can just go straight to the business page on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram under Premier Leather Crafters, and you guys can see the final picks. And this will probably be posted as early as tomorrow because I want to make sure that I really get that gloss and glass finished. So maybe another day. Uh, this time tomorrow, I'll look at it and see uh, if it has that mirror edge that I really, really like. Or if not, then I'll put another coat. So give it a day or two. You can check it tomorrow. If it's up there, boom, it had the look that I wanted. If it's not up there, then give it one more day. All right. I'm going to sign off from you guys just to let you know, hey, look, uh, again, I am pleased overall with the project. I am very pleased with the overall of the project and Ben this is my first one true I told you guys from the offset this is my first one that I made so I am overall pleased so this is another product that will be added to the premier leather crafters line and people can start taking these uh, taking advantage and putting in your purchase order for these and I think I'm just gonna do two sizes um, well actually three so I'm gonna do an 8 inch uh, valet tray a 10 inch valet tray and then i'm going to do a six by eight or probably a six by nine valet tray just to give that rectangular shape just to give customers a third option of something else because everybody i mean you might have more stuff or more junk you want to put in your valet tray so that six by nine is going to be a nice a nice size valet tray for so those three options and then they have the three different prices when the customer calls in hey this is the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters, Robert Muhammad. You guys stay tuned. More videos to come. I appreciate you for chilling with me these 14 minutes. So, hey, you guys keep crafting, keep it real, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.